parce que rien ne va plus. You never win on last minute bets anyway. Winning is not nearly so important as living dangerously. The suspense is unbearable. I do hope it will last. Ça, nous sommes vraiment. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad of having a losing streak. Sick transit, glorious money. What are you complaining about? You're no worse off. What you've lost on the black, you've won back on the uneven. Isn't that a perfect analogy between art and the soul? Well, now that's fascinating, Oscar. Uh, what do you mean exactly? I haven't the faintest idea. Bonjour, <laughs> Madame, Monsieur. Beverly, Mr. Wilde, Mrs. Patsy. Certainly, Madam. Well, Patsy, it seems the lily has found the streets of New York paved with gold. Mm -hmm. It seems so. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And having her expenses paid by that amiable Mr. Gethard, must have been. In over a million ways, so I hear. Mm -hmm. But what I don't understand is, for such a level-headed lady, why a sudden here. passion for gambling? Oh, it's not hers. The prince has developed a mania for it. He never goes anywhere without his back glass. So. Are he and the lily? Oh, no, he's still with Daisy Brooke. Though I would say that... Uh, lily is his next best friend. <laughs> Wheat! Elle a bonk. <laughs> well, I must say, that makes a pleasant change. Will you care to take over for a moment, Francis? Certainly, sir. Are you winning? I'm keeping ahead. I don't see nearly enough of you these days, my dear. I was hoping for a moment or two alone with you. Perhaps later? I look forward to it. So shall I. late for callers, isn't it? Are we interrupting? No, not a bit. You see, Patsy, I told you we'd end up in the tower. <laughs> now, Lily, I want to know the truth. Oscar says you're leaving for America again. Yes, I've arranged another tour. So soon you've done two already. What, the audiences want me? Only the audiences. Are you taking your little niece with you? That rather depends on how long I stay. Surely, Lily, I the police, Signora. The police? See, Mr. Beverly's trying to stop them coming in. Coming in here. There, there is illegal gambling here. They come to search the house. <laughs> Nothing illegal well, we'll going on. Look then, shall we? Everybody stand quite still, please. Now then, what's going on here? Gambling, is it? Certainly not. What a suggestion. We got the lot of you. Red-handed. This is outrageous. I shall inform your superior, sergeant. You can do that, sir. Down at Bow Street. Come out of there, wherever you are. Trying to do a bunk, were we? Have you any idea whom you're addressing? I take it, madam, you are the owner of this gaming room. It was only a little harmless and you was... I shall have to ask you to come along with me, madam. Unless you kiss me first. Or would you rather have a glass of champagne? Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm damn. Hang it, it's Bobby Peel. George, you are. Oh, George. Bobby really nearly gave me heart failure. I'm sorry, Lily, I couldn't resist it. <laughs> no idea we'd catch such a big fish, though. <laughs> you impudent young puppies. I should have you thrown in the river. Beverly, some champagne, please, for Sir George and Mr. Peel. Very good, madam. Lily, I'm going to miss you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, my dear. My mind was wandering. You said something. Oh, yes, uh, so, uh, you are off to America again? Tomorrow, Father. Tomorrow? Is your mother going with you? No, no, she's in Jersey. Mm. Looking after your daughter. Oh, yes, I know about her. Little Jean-Marie, your love child. I 
am the last one who should blame you. I've taken a house for them. Why don't you go there, Father? I cannot go back to Jersey, Lily. You know that. It will not help me. And I can't risk having Jean-Marie brought up in London. No. If your husband found out about her, he could make your life very unpleasant. He still refuses to give you a divorce? Yes. So, it is better for your mother to be with your child than with me. Why do you live here in a place like this? Oh, it's adequate uh, and uh, within my means. Yes, but I could No, help. Lily. No, my dear. I have some pride. And uh, it's sufficient unto my needs. I'll speak to Clem. No, I haven't seen or spoken to your brother in years. His wife uh, she doesn't approve of me. I'll come and see you when I get back. If you come back, yes, I, I should like that. I'm sorry. No, Lily, you're too like me to be sorry for anything that you have done. Right, 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 How long are you planning on staying in the States this time? Well, you have to ask me after the first night of my new play. Hello, Mrs. Langtree. <laughs> Last time you were here, you said you thought of applying for American citizenship. Is that still in your mind? Another one, Mrs. Langtree. <laughs> I haven't forgotten that, Mr. Descent. Well, what would the Prince of Wales' attitude be to that? His Royal Highness is a great admirer of America, but hardly likely to become an American citizen. <laughs> Believe! By all it's that's Simon, wonderful. Jim, get a shot. Jim. Hold it, Mr. Brady. <laughs> Welcome Jim. back to New York. How wonderful oh. to see you. <laughs> you look lovelier than ever. Hold it, will you, Mr. Brady? <laughs> it's great to have you back. <laughs> Hello, Freddy. I'm sorry I wasn't at the pier to meet you, but they tell me that half of New York was anyway. It certainly <laughs> seemed like it. <laughs> and I hear that the tickets for your opening night are selling at ten times a box office. Mm. Now, even better than that, the whole New York run's nearly sold out already. Now, that's what I call music to my ears. <laughs> uh, why don't you and your friends join us, Jim? Oh, thank you, Freddie, but I, I have a little business to talk over tonight. But I'll tell you what, we'll have a party real soon. How's oh, that? I would love oh, that. Good. Yes. Mm, that'll be great, just great. I'll call on you tomorrow. Yes, yes, do. Oh. Lillian, um, you, uh, you have met, uh, Mrs. Langtry, uh, haven't you? Lillian Russell. Oh, I'm sorry. How do you do? You just spoiled my evening. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to get you two together if it kills me. <laughs> I'll call on you tomorrow. Ready? Jim. Lillian Russell is now Broadway's reigning star, Mrs. Langtree. Are you impressed? You seem to forget, Mr. Descent. I'm in the impressing business myself. Uh, come on, boys. You've your ten cents worth. Give us a break. Huh? All right, Mr. Gebhardt. Thanks for being so patient for a change. Thank you, and welcome back, Thank Mrs. Langtree. Thank you. Good night, Mrs. Langtree. Good night. Good, Good luck, night. Good night. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. What, did you hear what he said? <laughs> I'm going to leave us alone. Oh, never, I hope. I'm that freshman, I'd like to punch him right in the nose. But you can't win against the press, Freddie. They always have the last word. And this time, I want them on our side. Well, what about you? Tomorrow, it'll be in all the papers. You're having a feud with Lillian Russell. Well, feuds are good for business. Is that all you ever think of? Not entirely. It's wonderful to have you back. You know, I wouldn't have minded staying in the hotel. Yeah, me too, only, uh, there's someone I wanted you to meet. Tonight? Mm. Oh, who? Abe Hummel. The lawyer? Mm. But I've told you that... Because I know what you told me. You broke that contract in New Jersey and he led the prosecution against you, but that doesn't make him an enemy. Lily, he's the best. I don't care. Well, you have to. It's not just your business interests over here, and Lord knows they're big enough. But if you want to ever want to get that divorce... All right, Freddie, I'll see him, but not tonight. Good evening, Miss Langtree. <laughs> oh, hello, Abe. Uh, yeah, please. I thought I'd wait till the gentlemen of the press had finished. May I say you handle them very well. Of course, having faced you on the other side of the witness stand, I've had personal experience. 
You don't resent losing that case? Oh, I can only admire the way you twisted the judge and jury around your little finger. I've been telling Lily she needs someone to look after her assets. What kind of assets? Yeah, mostly property, some mining. She has holdings in half a dozen states. What value, Mrs. Langtree? Considerable. <laughs> you see, she doesn't even know. What Lily needs is someone like you to help her keep track of them. Oh, I'd say Mrs. Langtree knows exactly what her assets are and their value to the nearest dollar. So why does she need a lawyer? You tell me. Well, with shifting real estate values and all the different tax laws, you need someone to protect your investments. Tell you when to sell, when to buy more. I understand you also have a husband you want rid of. Oh, it's no secret, Mrs. Langtree. That's what I call him. If I have one natural inborn talent, it's for getting rid of unwanted husbands. <laughs> you see, what did I tell you? I'm only wondering how much it's all going to cost me. Oh, well. My services come cheap. The legal business, I charge what the traffic allows. For investments, 10% of every transaction. Is it a deal? I never discuss such details over dinner. When can we discuss them? Tomorrow? I rehearse from 9 to 5. Any time before or after? Very well, Mr. Hummel. Tomorrow morning. 6 o'clock. This for your health? Every morning. Well, look, Mrs. Langtree. You want me to handle your business, huh? You offered to handle it, Mr. Hummel. Yeah, well, I've been thinking. Since I'm also running Mr. Gibbard's, I'll make you a special rate. Eight percent. Is that fair? Yeah, I can see no reason why we can't come to terms. Good. Except I was thinking more in the nature of three percent. Three? Oh. Thank you, Beverly. What are we stopped here for? It's too cold for walking. I quite agree. You were saying, Mr. Hummel? Mrs. Langtree? Gibbard said you'd be reasonable. Three percent of nearly two million is very reasonable. Well, look at it from my point. I have my expenses. I could lose other business. Mrs. Langtree. Mrs. Langtree. Free. Okay, okay, free. Free. Okay, three percent. Uh. Uh. But I, I still think four would be more reasonable. Oh, I thought we'd settled it. Have you come again? Yes, sir. Well, there will be a lot of business. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you so much. Good night. Nice night. <laughs> To Mrs. Langtry, the greatest star and the greatest actress with whom I've ever been privileged to work. <laughs> May she continue to break box office records all through life. Thank you, Tom. Here, here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dear. Mr. Coughlin is a very fine actor. Oh, one of the finest. Damn sight better than Barrymore. Oh, you're just jealous, Freddie. <laughs> you had any word, Mr. Hummel? Well, I've been in touch with your lawyer in England, George Lewis. He's made several new approaches to your husband to ask him to agree to a divorce. No dice. Lewis is of the opinion we're wasting our time. He'll never let you go. However, Mrs. Langtree, your English law recognizes only non-consummation or adultery as grounds for divorce. But in this country, some states also accept desertion, the irretrievable breakdown of a marriage. An American divorce. Well, for this, we come back to something we've discussed briefly before. You'd have to become an American citizen. Well, why not? She's lived over here for most of the last three years. On tour from England. 
I know she owns property here, but it's also a question of establishing residence. Well, I bought her a house in New York. It cost nearly a quarter of a million. Isn't that enough? The point is, Mr. Gebhard, you bought it. A difficult judge might take exception to that. Yeah, well, listen, I... Please. Please, it's not something I can decide in a minute. Don't worry, Mrs. Langtree. These things take time anyway. Where do you go from here? A ten-week tour of the West, finishing in San Francisco. California's fine. Lease yourselves a house in San Francisco and stay there when you finish. Leave the rest to me. Come in. Excuse me, madam. There's a person wishes to see you. A person? He claims to be a judge, madam. You don't believe him? What does he want? He insists on seeing madam, sir. He refuses to leave. Oh, dear, well, we're late for the heirs, as it is. He really is a judge. It might be wise to see him. No, you go ahead and change, Lily. Uh, we'll find out what he wants. A photograph, most probably. Judge who? Judge Bean, madam. All oh, right, Beverly, uh, show him in. Yes, sir. Bean? Doesn't ring a bell. Judge Bean. Well, I was figuring on paying my respects to Mrs. Langtree. Uh, Mrs. Langtree's indisposed at the moment. Now, that surprises me, sir, because I'd just seen the show and she seemed in mighty good health. <laughs> the strain of the performance. Yeah, I understand a delicate lady like her, but it's a pity. It, it shows a pity because I come all the way from Texas. On business? To see her. And who might you be, sir? Yeah, forgive me. Uh, I'm Mr. Uh, Gibbard. And this is Mr. Uh, Hummel. Uh, Mrs. Langtree's attorney. Is this where she sat? Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Bean. Judge Bean. Judge Roy Bean. You're from Texas, Judge? Mayor, Justice of the Peace, and Circuit Judge in the town and district of Vinegaroon. May I ask why you come all the way to Chicago, Judge? About a year ago, I was going to hang a horse wrestler. On him, he had a likeness torn out of a newspaper. A likeness of the Jersey Lily. And I just couldn't wait to find out if the real lady could possibly match up to that likeness. <laughs> Do you not agree that it does, sir? <coughs> oh, yes. It certainly does. Do you not agree she's the most beautiful woman in the whole world? Oh, I certainly agree. <sighs> well, at least I've had the privilege of seeing her on the stage, but I... Uh, I sure would have liked to have met her in person. Yes, sir, I sure would. Day, gentlemen. Excuse me, Mr. Judge. From the signora. She's very sorry she cannot see you, but she sent you this. To Judge Bean? With warmest wishes? <coughs> Lily Langtree. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> It's absolutely true. Look, Judge Bean's written to me. Apart from everything else, he owns a saloon, and he's changed the name to the Jersey Lily. Salute. And he's changed the name of the town, Vinegaroon, to Langtree. <laughs> Let me see that. Congratulations. Can't say I'm too surprised, though. <laughs> You're not. I've done some checking on this Judge Roy Bean. He's quite a character. Rancher, gunman, judge, the only law west of the Pecos. And that saloon of his. The photograph you gave him is tacked up behind the bar. The whole place is plastered with posters, line drawings, every likeness of you that's ever been printed in the States. The place is a shrine. Oh, I wish I'd met him. Probably would have foamed at the mouth. You know, this could be useful. Who would not grant citizenship to someone who's had a town named after her? Hey, that's right. And listen to this, honey. We've been working. Well, Abe has. Now tell her, Abe. This lawyer I fixed up for you in California, Will Barnes, he thinks you have a very good chance. But you can't afford to get turned down. As well as the house, your best bet is to own property in the state. He's found the ideal spot. It's in Lake Country, about 90 miles north of San Francisco, a place called Wenick Ranch. It's a high plateau. Perfect stock raising country. He can get you around 4,200 acres for, say, $80,000. But money's no problem. That uh, property you got me to buy in Carson City, they found silver on it. Boy, I just wish I had your luck. You could sell shares in it, and with a little of what you made on this tour, you could buy and stock a Ranch, cattle, horses, whatever you want. Oh, I'll have to think about it. Take your time. It's going to be not too long. I'll leave you to talk it over. 
Isn't it great? Well, I'm not sure, Freddy. I'm British and well, I... What the hell does that matter? I'm talking about a place of our own and this is perfect. There's a ranch house, a lake, orchards, vineyards even. Oh, it sounds too good to be true. Oh, doesn't it? But it is. It's all there. And the best part of it is that I can buy the property next to yours and we can have miles and miles of land that's just ours. Happy? Mm. Didn't I tell you? It's the happiest month I've ever spent. Could you live here? Not all the time, perhaps. But to know that it's here to be able to lose ourselves in it. Mm. <laughs> you know, Lily, I've been thinking. I've got a million dollars or so and not doing anything. If I got a gang of workmen in and built a racetrack, I could buy some bloodstock. <laughs> racetrack? Yeah, for training. I could get a trainer. You could come in with me. We'd raise horses here and race them back east. Are you serious? Well, sure, why not? Langry wine, Langry farms, Langry stables. What do you say? When do we start? Tomorrow? <laughs> Next week? As soon as you're a citizen. <laughs> What's going on? The poker game of the century. Lily Langtree and Lillian Russell against Diamond Jim Brady, Freddie Gebhardt, and a few others. Langtree and Russell? Mm -hmm. They'll murder each other. Not if Diamond Jim's guess is correct. He's been trying to get them together. Who suggested this damn blasted game anyway? You did? Are you visiting your town in Texas? I'd like to, but it's not on the railway. Not even a branch line, but they're building one, so maybe next time when I... Come on, Lily, it's your bet. Hmm? Oh, I'm out. No bet. Oh, heck. Oh. I guess it's up to me, Lily. What would it cost me to see you? Another 500. Will you take my marker? No. <laughs> okay. I'll see you. Three kings. <laughs> oh, hats. Holy Moses. <laughs> What's the matter with him? I don't think he likes being beaten. By ladies. What happened? What's the story, Mr. Brady? Well, gentlemen, I guess you might say we've just been taken to the cleaners by Miss Lillian Russell, America's number one musical star, and by our newest citizen, Mrs. Lily Langtree, America's number one star at the theater. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Well, now, Mrs. Langtree, are you an expert poker player? Mr. Gebhardt told me how to play yesterday. Uh, yesterday? Well, how come? What's the secret? Miss Russell and I aren't gamblers. We work for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Langtree's right, gentlemen. We have to earn every penny. So, we only bet on certain <laughs> Ready? The boys will never believe this. Boy, you sure showed us up. Yeah, never mind. Thank you, Dominique. Really I guess I should be used to you doing everything better than me. Good night, sir. <laughs> Don't be right. silly. You know, Lily, I've been thinking. Again? Yeah, I know I'm not very good at it. Darling, what's the matter? That's just... I never seem to do anything right. Ranch eats up money like you said it would. Oh, we can afford it. Yeah, but I think we'll have to spend more, a lot more. That stock I bought's no good. I have to buy some champion blood stock, even if it means importing horses from England. All right. That's what you want. There's something else. A 
the partner's in the ranch, why can't they make it permanent? They keep putting it off. Soon, Freddy, soon. You're a citizen now. Abe says you can get a divorce for desertion in California any time you say the word. When are you going to let him go ahead? I miss Jean-Marie so much. Yeah, I know. And my father's not been well. It's time I did something for him. I want him and mother to bring Jean-Marie over here to live with me. I don't want to decide anything so important till we're all together. That's fair enough. I can understand that. Just so long as you love me. So pretty. Così elegante. Why don't we wear such pretty things nowadays, signora? Hmm? <laughs> Tell the house manager to cancel the show tonight and until further notice. What is it, Signor Freddy? Her father's dead. <laughs> Indianapolis. India? I don't think you even want to. I don't believe it anymore. Hello, Aunt Emily. Hello, my darling. Are you getting on with your lessons? Yes. I believe she's just as good as you were at her age. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Look, Uncle Freddy. Yeah, that's great, great. Come along, Jean-Marie. Why do you have to spoil everything? Me? You go on and on about well, it. Damn it, Lily, don't I have the right? You say you love me and you want to marry me, and now that you have the chance, you won't. Well, we'll have to wait a little while. Well, how many more years? I mean, time and again, Abe and Will Barnes have arranged for your divorce to be heard in San Francisco, and you've always stopped it. But now I want it settled. I've kept my part of the bargain, you keep yours. When that California divorce goes through, we can be married in a week. It wouldn't settle anything. What do you mean? Look, I'm terrified of Edward. He'd be bound to find out about Jean-Marie. He's vindictive. The scandal he could cause will ruin her life and ours, and hurt others. So it's Jean-Marie that stops you. I can't even acknowledge she's my daughter. What do you think it's like having to pretend? I have to protect her. You've known this all along. You never meant to get a divorce. I keep hoping that Edward will change his mind. And all because of your daughter? She never stopped you from doing anything before. You've hardly seen her for the last three years. Aunt Emily, Grandma's made some lemonade. In a minute, Jean-Marie. In a minute. What are you going to do? At the end of this season, I'll go back again to London and try and get Edward to give me a divorce. It's all I can do. Listen to me. If he still won't, and you're not prepared to come back here and marry me, and I hope with what happens to anybody else, then we're through. Finished. I'm not taking any more. So, I'm sorry. Oh, why is he so cruel? It's so pointless. He will give you a divorce over his dead body, he said. And that was even after I'd offered him 10,000 pounds, as you suggested. Strictly illegal, of course. But it only made him more determined not to let you go. So what do I do now, George? Stop the allowance, I take? No, no, at least that keeps him quiet. In a way, you may be lucky. He knows we have to get him to agree to let you divorce him. Whereas, of course, where the position's reversed, he could cite various people and cause the greatest scandal of the century. I suppose I were to go and see him. It would do no good. He'd only enjoy the proof that he still has some power over you. So, there you are. Oh, well, thank you for trying. Of course, if I hear anything... Yes, yes, of course. Will you go back to America? Only if America comes and fetches me. Mr. Gebhardt has at last run out of patience. That could be awkward with your extensive business interests, isn't that? Well, they're not so extensive as they were. Oh? We spend a lot of money buying champion racehorses, bloodstock for the stable. The train carrying them to California was derailed and, well, those that weren't killed outright had to be shot. Oh, appalling. All of them? Yes, horrible. And the end of the ranch, I'm afraid. Neither Freddy nor I have the money to replace them. It can't be as bad as that, surely. Oh, but it is. 
Well, I should have listened to my business sense, not Freddy's. It's taken up most of what I've earned over the last six years. Um, Mr. Gephardt? Down to his last million. Poor man. What will you do? <laughs> Take a new theatre. I have my company. I could recoup most of my losses. Oh, I want to see you in a new play. As you like. Shakespeare. Now, I know the critics tore me apart the last time I appeared in it, but I've learned a lot since then, and I'm going to make them eat their words. And I have a feeling that you will. <laughs> Lily, my dear. <laughs> Oh, hello, George. <laughs> oh, how lovely to see you. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me. Yes, of course. Good day, Mrs. West. And Mrs. Langford. Thank you again, George. Oh, Lily, I couldn't believe it when I heard you were home. How marvellous. <laughs> You know, you haven't changed a bit. Oh, should I have? Well, we're none of us get any younger, though you seem to. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> well, you haven't changed either. Oh, do you think so? Oh, how kind. Oh, the town's been so dull without you. Yes, how is everyone? Your husband, the children? Still, unfortunately, with us. <laughs> and the prince. <laughs> Still with that insufferable days of poor man, but if that's what he wants. And Lady Dudley. Georgiana's blooming. Oscar says that since her husband's died, her hair has turned quite gold from grief. <laughs> and how is Oscar? More outrageous than ever. He's gone off to the country to write something or other somewhere, and he'll be simply furious, is Miss you. Oh, Lily. I may only have a moment. Oh, you're not leaving already. Uh, no, 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 but I've invited someone to tea uh, with you. George Arthur. Oh, young George. Young George. Only he doesn't know uh, that I'm here. <laughs> oh, I do hope you don't I mind. I think you'd better explain yourself. Yes. Well, you know how my husband never notices anything. Well, he noticed George. I see. And has made the poor boy promise never to see me again. Well, of course, I can't have that. No, no, no of course not. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> that may be him already. Um, ah. Uh, oh. Sir George Arthur, madam. Mrs. Langtry. I had no idea you were back. I can't tell you how delighted I was to hear from you. What a pleasure to see you, George. Yes, isn't it? I say, Patsy. Oh, what a lovely surprise. Oh, Lord, it's awful. To see Patsy? Uh, not exactly, Mrs. Langtry. It's rather too complicated to explain, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> if you want to leave, you'll have to unlock the door, George. Uh, uh, but first of all, you'll have to find the key. <laughs> oh, Lord. Just give me a kiss and I'll give you the key. But Patsy, I promised. Oh. Mrs. Langtry. I think you better kiss her, George. But I can't. I. No. Oh. No. Please. Not both of you. Now, I'm warning you. That's enough. This is silly. I'm not going to kiss anyone. No! Oh. 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 <laughs> Please! I can't stand it! I give in! I give in! Oh, now there's a good boy. Mm. Oh. Your turn now, Lily. Oh, no, now look here. <laughs> That's enough, Dominique. You are not well, Signora. You, you should be in bed, Carla. Oh, how can I? The play opens tomorrow. I must rehearse. You could delay the opening for a few days. Certainly not. I'm quite capable of going on. Oh, Signora, I was worried about I'm you. I'm quite capable, I tell you. Oh, dear. It might be as bad as they say, Freddy. It's only measles. Yeah, but then she got influenza on top of it. Now they're afraid of pneumonia. She's fit, she's strong, she's, she's bound to pull through. 
Have you seen the ladies? Looks bad. I wrote to Judge Bean and told him that as a token of my thanks, I'd like to present the town with a drinking fountain. He turned it down. He said that he was honoured, but the only thing in Langtree that nobody drank was water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lily. Lily, I can't tell you how relieved I am you're getting better. We've been very worried about you. you. No, no, thank heavens. Your doctor said it was a close thing. I think maybe it was. Mm. Alex has been very worried too. She sends her very best wishes. Thank you, Royal Highness. I'll try to write. Oh, there's no need. We're going down to Cowes for two or three weeks on the yacht. When you're stronger, why don't you come and join us for a few days oh, to rest and relax? I would love to. That would fit in perfectly. I've had to postpone the play for six weeks. But you're going ahead with it. Oh, yes, yes. And then we're doing Antony and Cleopatra. Mmm, more Shakespeare. Well, I've read that Cleopatra is an impossible part. <laughs> Most actresses fail in it. Well, if anyone can play the Serpent of the Nile, it's you, my dear. <laughs> now, you look after yourself. We can't do without you, you know. But, sir, I'm afraid you can't come in, sir. Who's going to stop me? What's going on? Freddy! I'm sorry, madam. You're supposed to be ill. What the hell's going on here? Freddy, please. Your Royal Highness, this is Freddy Gale. Yeah, I know who this is. There better be a damn good explanation for why he's here. Try to get well, Lily. Remember, we're expecting you to join us. Thank you, sir. Freddy, how could you? What are you talking about? Go after the prince and apologize. Like hell, what was he up to? Look, he came to see me. He's a friend. Yeah, I know how friendly you were. Don't think I don't know you were always comparing me to him. All I had to do was snap his fingers. Oh, you're wrong. Yeah? Well, I've had my eyes opened. I come all this way thinking you were dying, and I get here to find him all That's over you. That's true. You come here, you embarrass me. You make a fool of yourself in front of the prince. Freddy, how could you? No, this is one time you don't turn it back on me, Lily. Oh, I can see what's been going on. You were only out for what you could get. You used me! You led me on and on and bled me until there's nothing left! There's only one thing you'll never lose, Freddy. Your stupidity. Oh, Antony. Nay. I will take thee too. Age shall not wither her, nor custom. custom, nor custom stale her infinite variety. <laughs> you were wonderful, magnificent. Thank you, sir. No, 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 I thank you. We all do. I shall bring Alex at the first opportunity. Oh, I should be on it. <laughs> Who'd have thought this, eh? Ten years ago, when you first stumbled on the stage and forgot your lines. <laughs> Wish I could stay for your celebration. Oh, you're not staying. Unfortunately, no. Daisy is leaving for Hamburg tomorrow, and I promise to spend a little time with her. But I shall be back to see you. Thank you, sir. No, 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 my dear, no. You are the queen tonight. <laughs> Good night, Patsy. Good night, sir. Bobby. Good night. Noble Anthony. Good night. Good night. Oh, isn't she clever? I could have died myself when she took that little snake out of the bath. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wilde is here. He's, uh, he's just come. Oscar, I wondered if he was... Give me my robe. Put on my crown. I have immortal longings in me. Oscar! 
<laughs> My dear. Oh, Lily, Lily. Tonight you have proved your divinity. You were pleased with me. Enraptured, drawn up out of myself into quite another world of wonder. <laughs> that impossible creature will not come in. He was so moved by your performance, he is afraid that he will weep again at the very sight of you. And tears would quite spoil the beauty of his eyes. Oscar, you know some amusing people. Mm. <laughs> ah. Let me look at you. Perfect as ever. Or as near perfection as sad humanity can hope to come. Still as big a flatterer as ever. And flattery is the last refuge of a scoundrel. <laughs> what is today? Tuesday. I make it a golden rule always to tell the truth on Tuesdays. After 11.15. <laughs> Patsy, my dear, you are the third most ravishing person in the room. Oh, no need to ask who the first two are. Oscar and his reflection. <laughs> <laughs> How perceptive you are, my darling. <laughs> now, Oscar, disrobe and have some champagne. Oh, uh, no, I'm afraid I can't. I have a long-standing arrangement made all of ten minutes ago. Oh, I'm sorry. So am I. I have something I'm burning to talk over with you. I must see you soon. Well, when? I never put off till tomorrow what I can possibly do the day after. But in your case, I'll make an exception. I shall call tomorrow morning. Please. Without fail. Mm. Patsy. Gentlemen, <laughs> Lily, again, I kiss the hem of your garment. <laughs> and here's another one. Antony and Cleopatra at the Princess's Theatre last night. Spectacular production. Mrs. Langtree was superb. Her performance was a revelation. At one step, she has joined the select few at the head of her profession. Signora, questo è proprio meraviglioso. Oh, not at all. I worked damn hard for that. <laughs> and here's another one. Oh, no more, Charles. Please don't they say anything about you. Well, a few nice well, things. Well, let's hear about you for a change, oh, then, please. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Wilde, madam. Oscar, so early. Good morning, divinity. This must be unique. I told you I long to see you. Is that coffee? I long nearly as much for coffee. Good morning, Mr. Wilde. Ah, I am always happy to salute a fellow Irishman. I enjoyed your performance last night enormously. Thank you. You've been reading the reviews. Well, I didn't intend to, but Charles brought them round. What so... a pity I'm not a drama critic any longer. I should have written you a review that would have been unforgettable. Yes, you'd write brilliantly about the light sets and costumes and things, not a word about our performance. Oh, how true, how very true. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I must be running along. Must you? How very tiring. I'll see you at the theatre. Yes, of course. Well, how wonderful to see you. And you. You have brought spring back to the grey autumn of London. And you've done so well. And you. You read my books? Yes, of course I have. What had. did you think? I thought they were very wicked. And very clever. And I thought them the most original things I'd ever read myself. Oscar, you are <laughs> Yes, isn't it wonderful? Everyone thinks that I based Dorian Gray on Bosey, but it's not true. I'd written it long before I ever knew he existed. Bosey? Lord Alfred Douglas. You met him last... No. No, you glimpsed him. Oh, yes, your young friend. Yes, isn't he divine? And such a talent. He's written a poem to Constance that is pure roundelay. Yes, how is your wife? Quite perfect. Devoted to the children and almost distressingly faithful. <laughs> but enough. <laughs> You're dying to know why I'm here. Well, to see me, I hope. Well, that first, but more important. I've written a play for you. A play? George Alexander's been asking me for so long. Finally, I went up to a little cottage at Lake Windermere to escape, and I thought of you and dashed it off in a frenzy. I've called it Lady Windermere's fan. You thought of me? The main character is you. I've told Alexander. It can't be anyone else. Oh, Oscar, 
Well, what is it? A, a comedy, a drama? A... One of those modern drawing room plays with pink lampshades. <laughs> it's bound to be a tremendous success. Royalty will be turned away night. <laughs> oh, Oscar, I can't wait to read it. Well, I brought it to you. And, and what do I play? A beautiful, mysterious woman with a past. She's not quite accepted by society. Unknown to everyone, she has a grown-up, illegitimate daughter, Lady Windermere. The play opens in the morning room of the Windermere's house. And what makes you think the part is suitable for me? It will be a sensation. Do you think I'm old enough to have a grown-up daughter? Illegitimate or not? It's just possible. It's all illusion. And so piquant. Here. No. But I'll read it for you. I don't want to hear it. Don't even open it. Lily, think of it. You and I together. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I've never thought of you as a dramatist, and certainly not for me. Uh, you'll change your mind. I'll leave it for you. No, take it with you. And don't say any more. You're rejecting it out of sheer vanity. Yes, vanity. I won't cheapen myself by touching your play. And I don't want to see you anymore. better. George Baird. I'm sorry, do I know you? Not yet. You will. I doubt that, Mr. Baird. Call me Squire. I asked what you put your bets on. John's boy in the Admiral. They've no hope. I have horses in these races. But these are your bets. They'll win. I can't take them. Throw them away. But if these come in, it could mean hundreds of pounds. What do you want me to do with it? You can spend it taking me to dinner. Don't have anything to do with him, Lily. Who is he? A gambler. Well, he's Baron something or other, but they call him Squire Abington. Oh! He's an unspeakable man. He has far more than much money than he knows what to do with. And a very bad reputation with women. Thanks for the dinner. It was your money. I'll repay you. I don't take money from women. It's usually the other way round. It's very late. Thank you for seeing me home. Aren't you going to offer me a drink? I'm rather tired. But please, help yourself. And call for Beverly when you want to leave. Hmm? Good night. What are you doing here? I advise you to leave at once. Let me go. Let me go. 
You best know why I'm here. You disgust me. You could try that with other men, Lily. Not with me.